As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. I'm high up on a hill overlooking a giant state-of-the-art deer breeding facility in Poverty Canyon. We're out here in West Texas, folks. It is a remote part of West Texas, but that's one of the most impressive deer breeding facilities I've ever seen. This is Poverty Canyon Whitetails. I guess it's been about 10 years since I've been coming out here. This is some arid country. It's beautiful in its own way. Summertime, it's really, really hot. And this facility, I mean, when you get up high above it and you look down, you can really see how sprawling it is. It's giant. I'm Lisa Sheffield Rowe and I'm with Poverty Canyon Whitetails in Tennyson, Texas. The owner of the ranch is Danny Knox and he just recently purchased the ranch and is committed to being a deer farmer. There is just a lot of work to be done. The work that needs to be done out here is not on the deer. Our pedigrees are awesome. Um, we've got an amazing deer herd. I'm fortunate to have inherited it. but. The pens need work, we've been taking fences down, we've been clearing things out, we have um, been adding alleys and uh, lanes around and um, just moving things around a little bit. It's a lot of manpower. This is a very dry area out here in West Texas and with the pens being overgrown the way that they are, it's not good because number one, you can have fire and number two, you need to be able to see your deer every day and be able to get in there and have them used to you, not just where you can't see them at all. Lisa's got her hands full, and what I mean by that, this is a big operation. When you take a look at it, I really don't know how many pens they have, but they got a pile of them, and most of them are in serious need of uh, some TLC. I mean, they're overgrown, the, the fence needs to be taken care of. I mean, there's just a lot of work that needs to be done, but the one thing, that they have out here that really no work needs to be done on at all is the deer. The deer are top notch. Every successful deer farm winds up, they build it off of a foundation of a bloodline. And the foundation bloodline that they have here has never changed since well, 12 years ago. That foundation is strong, it's reputable, it's dependable, it's predictable, and it's valuable. I'm hard pressed to, to come up with a deer farm that we've been to that has deer more crowded than this. And it's, it's just because of the pen design. They have enough uh, square footage in there for the number of deer, but it's the shape of the pens that I think is causing the problem. This is the only deer and wildlife story show that we've ever done where we have not been able to actually enter the pen with the deer. What we wound up doing on this time, we had to get up high above the pen, up on top of the buggy, and shoot down on them. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, 
the North American Deer Registry, Bean Fence Company, winadeerfarm.com, the Texas Deer Association, Newport Laboratories, Game Management Systems, Shock Effect Maximizer and Seacal, Deer Guardian Misting Systems, buymydeer.com, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, Record Rack Deer Feeds, and by All Seasons Feeders. It's a lifestyle. Closed captioning for Deer and Wildlife Stories with Keith Warren is brought to you by Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch. Jeff from Texas says, Dear Keith, what factors do you look at when recommending a deer feed? Should I choose one based upon high protein content? I want to make sure I'm choosing the right one. Jeff, good question. Uh, protein content, you know, anything after about 18% protein, the deer aren't going to digest it. It just goes out in their poop. Uh, when you ask 10 different people, you're going to more than likely get 10 different answers as far as what kind of deer feed to feed. It's like, kind of like vehicles. Everybody's got their personal favorite, Ford, Chevy, Dodge. My personal favorite is Record Rack, and it's for many reasons. It's the most palatable feed I've ever fed. I've been using it for 20 years. It's competitively priced. It's available everywhere. And the best reason is my deer get big eating it. And so that's a great question to each his own, but I would encourage you to go out there and, and give Record Rack a try. Give other brands a try. and no matter how healthy something is, pour the feed out on the ground. If the deer don't eat it, it's not gonna do any good at all. Jeff, that's a good question. It's undeniable there's a lot of work left to do here, but it's also undeniable that the genetics, well the genetics as well as, well the foundation deer are here and they've got a great future. Okay, well, I can look at them. They're all pretty young. They're all yearlings, right? Yes. I was going to say, and, and I mean, they're nice yearlings. Is there anything special in there, at least blood-wise? Um, we've got, we used quite a good bit of semen last year. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of inherited it, so I've been going through everything, and I'm very proud of what we have right now. Well, so far, I, I'm pretty impressed with what you have. I mean, I, I look at... We're going to show these other deer in this pen here and this pen here in just a second. But, folks, I want to tell you something. I, I've been I've been out here at this ranch many, many times, and in, in, uh, starting years ago, back before these pens were actually built. And I'm looking at these pens and going, this is not your typical uh, the the typical condition that a deer pen is in. Okay. No. I mean, this it just isn't. Okay. And and the reason why is because the last owner of the piece of property, well, he 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 gave it up. And so this was a world-class facility, it really was. And, and when it wasn't taken care of and all the, all the spring rains and early summer rains that were out here into the San wow. Angelo area, all this new growth, and all of a sudden I'm looking at these guys out here and I can also tell by their demeanor that there hadn't been a lot of people around them too. Correct. I mean, and, and the reason why is you can, you can look at the deer and, and when deer are around people, they get kind of calmed down. And these deer, I mean, they're all bunched up together. They're kind of skittish, and so they're not they're not real calm. And so as you're here with a new staff and all, you're going to be spending much more time in the pens, yes. getting them all cleaned up, and so they're going to be much more acclimated to human activity, and so they're going to become calmer and calmer. And we know as, a, as white tail breeders that the less stress, the better the deer are going to do. Now, this pen right here, who are these guys in here? Those are yearlings as well. Mm -hmm. um, we've got an older buck in there with them. And um, before I came here, they had this thing called a Big Brother program. And it's an older buck with the younger bucks, and it's supposed to calm them down and keep them gentle and, and stuff. But there's just not been hardly anybody in these pens on a consistent basis to keep everybody calm. I've never heard it called um, Big Brother program, but that, that's really a good description because yeah. Uh, typically what happens, folks, is, is deer are very social animals, and, and what's going to happen, you're going to have one dominate uh, the other ones. I mean, there's going to be a dominant one in this pen of yearlings, this pen right here. So what a lot of times they will put a big brother in there because he's bigger, he's stronger, and he's going to kind of keep everybody else in line. Yeah. What happens in every deer pen, typically there's a dominant animal, and by putting a, a mature, well, a, an older deer mm -hmm. than the... Than the other deer, I think that's I think that's a good policy. I do it at my place. So, this pen right here, 
Tell me about these guys. These are, they couldn't be yearlings. No, those are our two-year-olds, mm -hmm. and then we've got a three-year-old in there. And again, I guess that's the big brother deal too? Yeah. Okay, and, and that's fine. I mean, just a one-year age difference really makes a difference as far as mm -hmm. body sizing goes. And, and really, if you compare like this pen right here, the four-year-old to the one-year-old, I mean, he's much bigger, but yeah. you can see a difference between the two and the three-year-old there. But, the, you know, I look at your two-year-olds and I'm thinking, genetically, I know those deer are really, really good deer. Yeah. I mean, and so although this is new to you, as far as new here, I mean, mm -hmm. you've been in the deer business forever, but this is new to you, and I know you're trying to go through and see what do you have. Yeah. And uh, and, and folks on, on the program, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna try to sit down with Lisa and try to give her my input. Everybody's got an opinion. I want to give her my input, but 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 right off the top of my head, I can say the thing. First off, you've got great deer. I mean, I take a look at these guys, these guys, and these guys, and I'm picking out some exceptional two-year-olds in here, and I think uh, genetically, you really do have a good foundation. But there's a whole lot of physical man labor that's got to be put down to get these pins in good shape. Yeah, I mean, to see their antlers, it makes me smile. And that's what makes me happy when I come out here because everything else is work yeah, yeah. that needs to be done. Well, what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to address something other than just uh, man work in these pins because there's going to be some cute computer work that needs to be done yes, too. Sir. So uh, let's uh, go show me some more deer. Okay. I'm Lisa Sheffield Rowe, and this is Church, and you're watching Deer and Wildlife Stories with Keith Warren. Today's show is brought to you in part by BuyMyDeer.com, your online source for monster whitetails.